Hello everyone, this is Chris from Chris Trains with tutorial number 8 for the ICNG where we'll talk about ETCS full supervision with the planning area. I'm going to assume that you've watched tutorial number 5 that explains how to turn the safety systems on and off. I'll just go ahead and turn on ETCS and now you can see the components of this particular safety system. This icon here shows us that we're in full supervision mode the grey bar around the outside of the speedometer shows us that this is the maximum speed we're permitted. And this is the planning area that shows us any upcoming changes in speed. Now the planning area will only show you drops in speed from where you are. So there are increases in speed ahead of us, so at the moment it's just showing a collection of these little up arrows that show us increases in speed limit with no drops in speed limit ahead of us. So let's go ahead and start driving. get up to the 40 km an hour limit and we'll just hold it there for a moment. ETCS is the European Train Control System. It is far more accurate um, than the older ATB system and can enforce a number of different conditions uh, to ensure that the driver doesn't overspeed. And it also takes account of the different braking curves as you come up to lower speed limits. So that double beep just meant that we passed an increase in speed limit sign or something happened to the ETCS and in this case the speed limit increased to 80 so you can see this bar now shows 80 kilometers an hour. So we'll speed up. Again the planning area doesn't show any drops in speed coming up so we're good to go up to 80. We've just entered a 120 zone so this will shortly ping up to 120. Now we're good up to 120 kilometers an hour. Now what you can see in the planning area now is there's a little down arrow that's appeared. Now what that means is there's a drop in speed limit coming up but it's still higher than current speed limit. So for example this is a 160 zone coming up, this is a 200 zone coming up, and then this might be a 150 zone, which is higher than we are, so we're still not seeing any actual instrumentation here that shows us of a drop in speed. Okay, we've now entered the 160 zone, as indicated by this bar around here, and now you can start to see how the planning display really works. This is the speed profile ahead of us. There's one increase in speed limit coming up. If I just look out of the window, you'll see it. So as that little arrow drops off the bottom of here, you'll see we pass that sign there, and we're now at a 200 km an hour zone. So let me just hold at 160 and show you what's going on here. So the first thing is, the grey bar shows us that the speed limit that's coming up now is 160, and there's a white extension that shows you that we can actually go up to 200. This display shows us the maximum speed of the train on the right hand side here, or the maximum speed limit we're in. So this train is capped out at 200 kilometers an hour. So this bar represents 200 kilometers an hour. This edge of the display represents 200 kilometers an hour. This indicates a drop in speed of something up to about 25%. This indicates another drop in speed of about 25%, and this indicates another drop in speed of and these are the relative distances from the train where these speed limit drops happen. So I can go ahead and start to increase my speed and what happens when I go over 160 is this will turn yellow and what that tells me is I'm still safe but I need to pay attention to the fact that my speed limit is going to drop and I need to start looking at the braking curve. This yellow bar here tells me when the braking curve will start to be enforced so once this yellow bar drops off the bottom of the graph, the yellow section out here will start to drop. And I need to make sure that my speed is always below this once it starts to move. So you'll see now this is counting down. That's the maximum speed I'm allowed to do to still make 160. So if I start to brake now, it's yellow, which means I'm not slowing down fast enough. If I apply a little more brakes, it goes white. That means I've slowed down correctly 
to get to the 160 by the time we hit this new zone. Same thing is going to happen again. Now I'm going to be brake monitored down to 120. See the planning area here shows this drop in speed to 120 coming up. Again, I have enough brake supplied that this is all white, which means I'm going to reach the 120 zone with plenty of time to spare. Now we're coming to see another speed drop ahead of us, this time down to 80. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to let this system start to intervene on its own, so I'm not going to touch the brakes. Now what will happen is, once the, once the braking curve limit drops off the bottom of this graph, the yellow section will start to drop, I won't apply the brakes, and then this will go orange telling me I'm beginning to overspeed, and when it goes red, the ETCS system is going to intervene with a certain amount of brakes to try and slow us down. So there's the orange, overspeed, there's the red, and it'll do it again. And then if I take control of the brakes, I can do the last section. The general idea here is that you never let ETCS do that. It does store a record in the driver log on the real train that shows you that you exceeded speed limits. It's not a good idea to do it. So the idea is to try and stay within the target speed as indicated by ETCS. Now what happens if you overspeed? So if I increase my speed now, remember we're capped at 80, so to start with it goes orange. That's okay. It's within tolerance, but if I go any faster I'm now getting the alarm, it wants me to brake. If I keep going faster, it intervenes and pulls us back to the speed limit. So that's trying to overspeed. So we've now just entered another speed limit, so we can speed back up to 120. Again, the gray section of the outside bar shows us the maximum speed we're allowed to do. And there's no extension here, which means that this is the speed limit ahead and there's nothing lower. The planning area shows one more increase in speed ahead of us, and then a speed drop after that, about four, maybe three kilometers away. So there's an increase in speed limit about 750 meters away. And this time we'll look out of the window and you'll be able to see again as this little arrow drops off the bottom of the planning area here, we will pass a speed limit sign. So we pass the speed limit sign. As the tail of the train goes through that sign, we now get ETCS showing us a speed limit ahead of 200. Immediately after that, there's a speed drop again, back to 120, so we could stay where we are. We could accelerate up over 120, and now it'll go yellow because we're not slowing down. But we still have plenty of room to play with here, so we're still within the, the braking curve that will get us down to 120 kilometers an hour by the time the next speed limit comes around. The bar around the outside has started to move. Remember, I need to slow the train down so that my speedometer doesn't exceed this moving goal here. If I'm not slowing down or not slowing down enough, it stays yellow as I start to apply some brakes and I fall within the calculated braking curve for the distance. The speedometer goes white. Everything's happy. Here comes the lower speed limit ahead of us. You can see it crawling down this graph. And as we pass into the new speed limit, we've achieved the correct speed. There's another speed drop coming up ahead. And now the profile has changed completely because it drops to zero here. Now that either means a red light or it means the end of the track. So we're okay to keep going. It's yellow, which means we're not slowing down. My speed isn't going to be monitored properly until this yellow line drops off the bottom of the graph, at which point this bar will start to drop. So we're okay to keep going. I don't want to push it too far, so before I start to get monitored, I'll slow down, apply some brakes. I'm still not slowing down enough, so a little bit more brake. 
little bit more brake, and now we're slowing down in time to reach this new speed limit of 80. The planning area speed profile is very dynamic. It will rescale on the fly based on the maximum speed limit of the train or the track limit where you are. So as soon as we drop off this speed limit, these two bars will rescale like that. And what this is showing me now is there's a drop here to about 75 or about 25% of the speed that we're going right now. So that's corresponding here. We've got to drop down to 40. A little bit more brake, more brakes, more brakes. There we go. We're now within tolerance. So that's okay. And now you can see this special arrow has a zero next to it. That indicates an end of track or a red light. And if we look up ahead, you can see in this case we have an orange light. Just it's my little test track. But there's some buffers up here which indicate the end of this track. So that's what you're seeing here is end of track. You can see here that the end of track about 500 meters away, which corresponds to this little bar that's dropping down here. And I should be slowing down now to make sure that I stop in time. ETCS is a pretty complicated system, but in full supervision mode, once you learn to read the, sp the speed profile from right here, and once you understand the bars around the outside of the speedometer, it's actually pretty easy to use. So let me just bring us to a complete stop here. So that concludes tutorial number eight, which is driving ETCS in full supervision mode.